All right, man. Well, we, we appreciate you joining us on the show today. Another episode of Staying in Trouble. Back at it, man. Back at it. So uh, just had uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. It seems like every day is a, a sale day right now. Uh, so we got one of my good friends, uh, one of my friends from college for full disclosure. Um, he was a half decent soccer player, very slow, but they let him, <laughs> oh, man. They let him onto the pitch. Uh, half decent basketball player. I'm pretty sure I won last time. He definitely is a much better golfer than I am. So if you are taking Marcus to the golf course, uh, try to play in small, small bills. That's my recommendation. You like how he introduces people on the show. Hey, at least I'm surprised he gave me credit for anything there. So I'll, I'll take, (laughs) I'll, I'll take whatever I can get. Awesome. So so Marcus, give us a little rundown of, so Marcus has been in sales for over 30 years and, and we wanted to bring Marcus on to talk about direct to consumer. Now we do a lot of stuff on Instagram and Facebook. We're all about social media for our podcast. And one of the things that everyone loves about social media and even now on TikTok, is sponsored and, you know, in the burgeoning uh, industry of direct to consumer. And so, Marcus, give us a little rundown of, of you, how you are in that industry and how you guys are dominating uh, so much that we can't even get free swag. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, uh, Eric, I, I'll, I'll figure out a way to get you something here eventually. The problem is we keep running out of inventory. So um, that's a good yeah, problem. So, yeah, that's, it, a good, that's a good position to be. It's good and bad, right? I mean, it's right. like, it's a constant frustrating thing to deal with. But um, yeah, so I've been in and out of the direct consumer space for, oh, I mean, uh, what am I looking at? 15 years now um, We with a couple different companies. It's funny to see how it has evolved over the last 15 years, though. I mean, it's, it's a constantly evolving and changing landscape. Um, like you mentioned, Eric, you know, Facebook, Instagram, those are kind of the the plays of the day, right? That's what everybody wants to be in on. And that's where there is a lot of opportunity, but man, you know, you go back 10 years and those weren't even a thing. Yeah. Did did I, did I cut out their audio? Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I mean, 10 years ago, those weren't even a thing. So uh, it, it is something that's constantly evolving. You feel like you're never really caught up, right? You're always having to learn the next thing. Um, But I love it. And, and today, I think it's even more important than ever. I mean, this whole pandemic, if it's proven anything, it's that companies need to have the ability to engage directly with their customers because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And having that direct consumer present, frank, presence has frankly saved our business through the last year. I, I don't think if we were solely relying on those retail relationships, I don't think as a small business like we are, I don't think we would have survived. So um, it's, it's critical. I think these days that you have that component to your business. See, I kind of noticed that now with, uh, with this pandemic that there's, and, and I don't want to shed too lightly on the people that are really hurting from it, but with this, there's people out there that, that are suffering from it, but there's people out there that have actually benefited from it and have done very good. And those people, some of them are quiet because, you know, when you're amongst a crowd that everyone's in one mood, like if they're all down and out, you don't want to be like, well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm doing great in this. Pandemic. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and you don't want to be that kind of a guy, but at the same time, are you kind of in that boat that because the way you've done sales, you're doing pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I am, we've had a good year. Uh, it's been, it's been, a, I think a lot of businesses that are, I mean, for us, my company, bluecoolers.com, we are, a cooler company, like a heavy duty Yeti style cooler. Right. And the two things work in our favor this year were one, everybody started going outdoors because they couldn't go to Disneyland and do other things like that. Yeah. And two, we're a very online heavy business. And, and a lot of the estimates are that this pandemic has shifted the, what was already an ongoing transition to online by maybe five to 10 years, it accelerated the pace of that, of that shift. And so um, yeah, there's a lot of businesses out there that have, that have benefited from it. Having said all that, at the end of the day, I, I, I hate this pandemic as much as anybody, right? And I want to see this thing go away and I want us to all be able to return back to normal. And 
Um, oh, you know, for sure. it, 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 but, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's been certainly some, some uh, tailwinds that we've experienced because of it. Right. Right. And so how did you guys make the decision early on to be direct to consumer? Like what, where did that come on the whiteboard? You know, um, I mean, for me, that always was the plan because that's what I, you kind of just go to what you know a little bit. And a lot of my experience um, in previous companies had been in that. And frankly, the other reason that we did is because it's an, it's a pretty low barrier to entry way to start a business. Um, trying to go direct to retail, at least for me, I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert in that, in that world, but trying to do that right out of the gate is difficult because you got to have high levels of inventory. A lot of retailers, especially the big ones, have pretty onerous requirements. Um, and you have to have those relationships in order to kind of break in through those doors initially. And as a business, just starting out without any sort of real grassroots following or brand recognition and none of those real relationships where I could just, you know, slide in the back door of, of uh, Cabela's or Bass Pro, like this was the way we needed to start the business. It's a slow, methodical grassroots kind of growth, right? Have you seen like with the advent of like Shark Tank and different like business related shows? Because you talk about that and and I think more people are, 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 are privy to that now are understanding what you just talked about. Like 15 years ago, no one really knew the secret sauce, you know, QVC, like, you know, telephone sales and TV sales were huge, you know, and we had our grandparents and they were spending a fortune, 10 grand every year on QVC on, <laughs> on whatever. And so, and now that's kind of evolved to, Hey, you know, you know, it feels like social media is a little bit of the new QVC a little bit in the amount of sponsorship and the amount that they mix in. And do you feel like, do you feel like we're at the peak of direct to consumer or do you feel like, well, like on social media specifically, or do you feel like, you know, we're, we're like in the second or third quarter? I, yeah, good question. I, I think we're in like the second quarter. I, I think um, if you look at some of the estimates, I don't know the exact numbers right now, but if you look at total retail sales, like just sales to consumers, um, online and at, at, in traditional kind of brick and mortar, the, the online part of that, even with Amazon included still represents a minority fraction of the total picture, Really, right? the total pot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it feels it's, like Amazon is selling like 98% of all it, products out there. Right yeah, I know. It does, doesn't it? But I mean, uh, if you go look at the statistics, it's still, there's a lot of market share still to be captured or, or just kind of shifted to that online digital marketing place. But as people get more and more accustomed to doing it, and that's what this pandemic has done is, is, is a lot of people that never had done it before because they were scared or just weird, leery of buying something online as they did it and they saw, oh, this works and it's pretty convenient. Then it starts creating habits that, that continue for years to come, right? So yeah, I think it's still got a long road to run. Um, now, specifically with regards to Facebook and Instagram, I think um, if you look at each of these new platforms, they have this period of time at the beginning, particularly where you can get really good results for really low return, right? right? And, and Google even had that period of time for a while where you could get clicks on Google for pennies. Now it's, you know, depending on the type of term you're bidding on, it can be in the dollars per click, right? Right. Um, Facebook has been a pretty low cost uh, platform for a while. It is, we are, and we're seeing this too, where it is shifting and you have to get more creative and, and be more really spot on with what you're doing. Um, but no, there'll we, be we, something, there'll be something new, right? I mean, right. There, there's something else coming. Like you mentioned yeah. TikTok. I don't even, I don't even know how to do TikTok. I, I, I mean, I, I, obviously I, I'm, I'm a much better dancer than Eric, so I probably should be on TikTok. <laughs> <There we> <laughs> But uh, I don't know how to advertise on the platform. So, yeah, I mean, there's going to be something new coming all the time. Well, sometimes it's not just even, well, it's advertising, but something kind of we learn. Now, you're based up in Utah and the, um, what do they call the Diesel Brothers? Mm -hmm. uh, they're up there also. And one of the things that I've always admired with their kind of business 
uh, their way of doing business is some, a lot of their videos, they're advertising for themselves, but they're doing something totally different. Mm-hmm. And they're just doing a fun video and it catches everyone's eye and it goes viral and everyone watches it. But, you know, they're advertising for themselves all at the same time. So, you know, these kind of platforms can even be helpful when you're doing a fun video, but you're you're kicking a blue cooler around or you're doing something along those lines. And then it just gets bigger and bigger. And the other thing I noticed that they something that's kind of a new thing is if you go to their website, they're starting to do giveaways where Mm. you buy so much, you have so many names in a hat, they give away a truck or a jet ski or whatever it is. And I've noticed a lot more websites, direct to consumer type websites are doing those type of a giveaways. Mm -hmm. Have you guys thought about that? Yeah, we so we do those. uh, We do those as well. Usually the strategy with giveaways is they're trying to capture just a little piece of information from everybody, whether it's just uh, even gets you to visit to their site because that's how then they start retargeting you through all these other platforms or capture an email or, or whatever. Um, but uh, you are right in that people want, um, particularly on social media, I think um, you're competing for a lot, of, uh, a lot of eyeballs and you have a very limited window to get somebody's attention, right? I mean, that in the middle yeah. of, the, of going like this, You've got to have something that jumps up somebody enough where they're like, okay, I'll stop doing this for one second and watch that video or whatever it is. And so um, generally just what, what I've seen, my experience has been trying to create just a static image and like, Hey, buy this cooler um, doesn't work that well, at least Mm -hmm. early on when I'm trying to engage new potential buyers, it doesn't work that well. You got to have something entertaining, something engaging, and interesting later on when you're retargeting those same customers with that, that have already engaged with you previously. Now you can start introducing like, Hey, buy this cooler because they're already warmed up to you as a company and your product. But right at the beginning, yeah, it's gotta be something interesting and fun generally, I think. Yeah. We've experienced the same thing trying to even get this show out there, you know, Looking at these two faces, you'll just keep going down that <laughs> real fast, man. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I mean, you just watch somebody when they're going through social media, right? And yeah. watch how fast they go through oh, yeah. it. I mean, it's quick. It's just. And so you've, there's got to be something there that they say, whoa, oh, what was that? Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's hard to come up with. That's hard to do because you mm-hmm. don't know what everyone's thinking, you know. Mm-hmm. The, now, benefit, the benefit of social media is that it's highly targeted right? That's one of the things I really love about it too, is you can, you don't have like, like TV, the challenge with TV is you're everybody, you're just advertising to the masses. And you got to hope that within all those people, the small subset that actually are interested in whatever you're selling them will engage. Um, in, in, in social media world, I can narrow down what I'm doing exactly to that group of people that I want to target. Cause I already know who they are and that they're interested in my product. So there is that added advantage that you have. Um, but nonetheless, you're still competing for that same, those eyeballs with a lot of different things. Every, you know, there's, we're just bombarded with messages everywhere we go. There's marketing and messages and sales and this and that. So it's competitive, right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. So what, I know we're at the beginning. I know that uh, I think with the marketing agency, did did they start out as an agency or did they start under, underneath your umbrella? Some of the videos that you guys use for blue coolers, um, is, it's an agency up in Utah as well that creates a lot of award-winning, funny videos. Did you guys have those, were they on your staff or how did that work out? Yeah, so uh, I have a couple uh, direct consumer digital marketing guys that I work with. Cause I'm, you know, I'm not the nuts and bolts execution guy. Like I know enough to probably break things <laughs> if I try and go in and like set up a Facebook ad or uh, like you said, create an advertisement. Um, yeah. He's, but there's he's, a, a, he's a, he's a number two point guard. If everyone's wondering, he's more of a <laughs> number two point guard. Don't ask him to run the ball. Don't ask him to play defense. He's just a shooter. That's what he's saying. I, I like sitting on the end of the bench and just <laughs> at this point and not pulling any muscles. That's, that's yeah. usually what I'm best at. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, 
the, the challenge with a, a company like mine, especially when getting started out, is that if you go to find, if you want to go find the biggest, brightest, shiniest ad agency, the budget I have is not enough to really interest them, right? And right. so what you end up getting is not a ton of really great attention, even though they have really talented people. Those guys are working on big projects that are big dollars. Um, so you do have to be scrappy, right? You have to be uh, look for different ways to do things. And uh, and what the way I've done it is I've found a couple guys that I've worked with for many years that know these things, but they're working kind of on their own, right? It's sort of a one one uh, one man show and we can work together and develop some of these things that um, are very similar to some of these big ad, ad agencies like, you know, Harmon. If you've heard of a, a company called Harmon Brothers, they produce some really yeah. cool creative ads, right? Well, I can't afford Harmon Brothers. Their, their, their price to create some of these ads is getting into the million dollar range for a three minute ad, right? I mean, that's just, that's big money. And, uh, yeah. no, you, you were going to say insane. You were going to say insane, but you're like, no, it's just big money. Just big money. <laughs> well, it's a, yeah, I, I'll be, I'll be politically correct and call it big money. Right. So yeah. for some people it works for us, it wouldn't work. It's too yeah. much. Um, but there's, there, there's a lot of talented people out there that are willing to do things at, at a much different price than that. And, and you may not get the same polish, but we've been able to develop some pretty, what I think are some pretty creative and pretty engaging ads that are funny and, and fun and, and tell a message. Uh, you're going to share that message of, of your product and your brand, uh, but doing it in a little more subtle and creative and fun way. Right. Now, I don't know if you listen to the show, but I came up with some good ones. I want to plug myself here. I, I came up with some really good blue cooler commercials. Well, I, I thought that they were good. I, I thought they were but, phenomenal. I, and I recommended I don't know if Mr. your sales Sorts. went up that much during that period of time when I was playing that uh, little advertisement over and over again. But uh, yeah, I, we've I been, know. we've been plugging the blue. Cool I don't know. Yeah, if you've heard them or not. Now, so. No, you told, no, Eric told me you've been plugging them, but I haven't heard them. I I'll need to hear what you, what you guys are cooking. Yeah, up the, uh, you have to go back quite a few episodes. I I've, we I, gave I up on blue coolers them. about three months ago, but yeah, well, we haven't yeah. been putting any advertising in, but I came up with one for your tumblers that I thought was my most clever one. Uh, I don't know where it came from. And then, uh, and then one for the cooler, it, it was a uh, walking down the Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. That one, you probably wouldn't want to play anywhere else. It, it, <laughs> it was funny. I thought it was funny. The guys may think it's funny, but, uh, but my wife even says, I cannot believe you put that out there. It's like, uh, well, I, did, I, did I may have been, I, I may have been pushing the line on that one. We, I think we got him on the hook on that one. He's what he's, he's wanting to know which episodes those are. <laughs> I, so I, I would have I like, to look it up. You know, the best ads push the line. I think they were, they, they walk right on the edge. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I was telling the story of a friend of mine that, uh, went to a bar was, was flirting with the lady was was going somewhere with her finally was able to get her home and it wasn't a lady and, <laughs> and, and his surprise notion and i compared that i'm giving you the really reader digest version but i compared that by looking at some of the other coolers that look official that look nice but do not keep your product as cold as blue coolers there you so go you may think you're getting the real deal just like my buddy with the girl in the bar, but when you get it home, it's not going to be as cold. <laughs> and that's a very real 21st century problem too. That's we got all be, we got to all be on the lookout for that one. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, 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 my wife said I was pushing the envelope on that one. I it's hilarious. And I thought it was funny. So we'll have to send you some of our jingles on that. Uh, real quick, Marcus, for some of our listeners that are trying to open up a small business because a lot of people are, we talk about them losing their jobs in reality. We're talking about them transitioning either from out of industries. And I think uh, what we're seeing is some of the successes out of the pandemic is the desire for the American dream and the small business to succeed just like you're doing. And, and so out of that, if you had like three things, I think one of them you just talked about was you have to be scrappy. You got to be creative. You got to be on the fringes. So 
I could break it down for our listeners. Actually, over the last two years, I've been on the cutting edge of the social media and advertising and the different algorithm changes. And we knew that the real estate was going to get more expensive on social media, which it has. And if you went back two years ago, you could literally almost advertise on Instagram for free. And then literally over the last two years, the gram is where it's at. And now we're seeing TikTok is starting to eat market share out of that. And they're starting to battle it out between reels versus TikTok. And, 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 you know, cause the gram kind of turned into bikini model central and, and now you feel TikTok is getting a little bit more, uh, a little bit more diverse. And so, but give us, give us two other, you know, other points that you think, Hey, I've got a product and I want to get scrappy. I want to get, see if I can get my product out there for some of our listeners that are just starting out and they're like, Hey, I have this great idea. I don't know if it works. That's the great thing about small business. Um, I don't know if you, if you heard, but Tony Heisch, the, the, the founder of Zappos just recently passed away. I did, yeah. And I was thinking about that for people that aren't really familiar in small business, he actually helped revolutionize small businesses over the last, probably 10, 15 years, actually, since Zabos was created. He was the one, for those that don't know the story, is he went in, he's like, hey, I'm going to sell shoes online direct to consumer. And so he went to Foot Locker, literally took a picture of some shoes, went back, put it on a website, didn't own a single shoe. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. On the web page. And then people started ordering shoes. Guess what he did? He went back to Foot Locker, bought the shoes, sent them out. He proved the model before he even bought a single piece of inventory. Hmm. And, and since then, in the startup industry, this has been the Bible now. This is how you do a this is how you start up a business in 2020. Don't come with a with a one-inch business plan that people have to read through analytics. No, it's really to start the model prove the model as easy and as fast as possible. And then if your model works for, if you can make a dollar, go, go get someone bigger to help you. You know, it's kind of like, Hey, if you can, you know, if if you can gross, if you can show that doing this will build your muscles. Great. Well, now let's pay for a trainer and get those muscles bigger. So give us, give us two more, like words of advice for, for our listeners that are wondering, you know what, Hey, I'm, I'm selling some widget or I'm selling, I've got this great idea for, I want to be this, I want to offer this chef service, or I want to offer cookie balls. Give us two more things, Marcus, that you would tell this burgeoning new small business owner. Yeah, no, I I think a lot of the points you made are good ones, Eric. Um, Believe it or not, those were good points. (laughs) So good job. Thanks. Uh, but but <laughs> no, just kidding. But um, you know, the other thing I would say, I mean, I mean, being scrappy definitely is one of them, right? You've got to, you've got to be scrappy. You've got to try and do as much as you can yourself. Don't hire it out because the more you start doing that, the more your expenses go up. And it's important to watch those expenses because the second one I would say is you need give yourself enough runway to actually be successful. And what I mean by that is you're probably not going to make money for about a year, at least, most likely. So have a plan that allows you to not make money for a year, because if you don't, you're going to short circuit your your business's ability to succeed and you'll never get there. Um, So have a plan, whether that's doing it on the side as a side hustle for the first year so that you still have a, a, a regular income, and you're doing this on the side to kind of build it up and get it going or whatever your plan is, I don't know, but you need to give yourself runway. And then you need to have a plan, right? Not just a financial plan, but a plan for your business. Like, what are we doing? What is that model we're trying to prove out? And to your point, I I like what you said about, you don't need to have a, you know, a 400 page business model that has 75 different things you're going to do before you ever sell your first widget, right? Like get it up, get it going, but have a plan that you're going to execute over the time, over that time so that you can measure whether this is actually working or not. Cause if you know, like you're, you're trying, you're just proving out a concept initially. 
And then as you prove that concept out, then you can start making bigger investments. Um, I would also add to what you said for number two and in doing it yourself is on social media. Another thing, like you don't have to buy a thousand dollar camera DSLR with a thousand dollar lens to produce great videos is genuine. Um, I don't know if you, Marcus, if you remember, cause I think he was around when, when you lived here in town is, um, the Dodge dealership with the blue genie and, Oh, what was that guy's name? What was that? He was, the, he was a sales manager. And I think he actually, uh, owned the dealership is, um, and so, uh, the chopper, the oh, chopper, the chopper. Yeah. chop, 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 chopper. <laughs> I do kind of remember that actually. <laughs> and so the, you know why he was successful? He was looked be- like a gangster out on the yes. car. Yes. <laughs> is he was genuine and in social media, man, People will look you up. You need to be genuine. Don't be telling me that that you're going to Brass Pro, Bass Pro Shop today and you show up in khakis and dress shoes and you've got a polo that's brand new. Because if you're showing up at Bass Pro Shops, you better be showing up jeans, a T-shirt, and the jeans better be worn out at the bottom from wearing them all the time. And so there's just a certain... Like people know the difference between, Hey, this guy's just acting. And this is, this is for real. And that's part of like the, I'd say number four, part of your, your concept or or maybe addition, like three a to what you said, Marcus is you got to tell a story, you know, Mm -hmm. like the number one thing when people uh, meet with us for the podcast is they're like, how did you guys end up here? How did you guys get started? And you know, much like a lot of things that happen to me in life, uh, uh, just, so you know, are, are hopefully one of our listeners and one of our common friends, uh, Georgie Porgy. I ran into <laughs> him in St. George. I was filling up gas at the Costco there and, uh, Georgie and, and, and Marcus and I have been friends now for probably almost 30 years and we're getting that old. And, yeah, uh, that's depressing, <laughs> but, is we tell the story of how our podcast started and how we've evolved. And that's, and that's part of the allure because, you know, when you're selling a widget, you're selling a part of yourself. You know, you talk about that concept and that business plan, really you're talking about, Hey, these are my thoughts. These are my ideas, my creativity. And so you're, you're taking this, you know, as kids, you go into arts and and crafts class, you know, and you're, you come out and you're like, Oh, look what I made mom and dad. Right. (laughs) And and we're kind of doing that. I agree. Mm -hmm. We're kind of doing that on, on, on a bigger scale. Well, now it's instead of mom and dad, it's our peer groups, our friends, and we're going, Hey, this is what I made. And hopefully, uh, and hopefully it works out. Like I'm, I'm even watching anyone with a big bank account. That's who we're showing it to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it is though. I mean, that's, that's what I love about entrepreneurship when it all comes down to it is it's the, it gives you this opportunity to build and create something that is your own. It um, it's, and, 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 and when you start out small, you control everything, right? So there's no one else to blame. It's only you. And you're either going to sink or swim based on what you do and the decisions you make. So you can really have an impact and, and you can see the impact happen in front of you. And, um, and that's fun. Right. And that's, that's, uh, that, I mean, for me anyways, that's fun. Yeah. For it. a lot of people, that's either the, the scary part or the fun part. And, uh, yeah. I just got done flipping a home and everyone's like, I was helping another person remodel their house and, and I wasn't even, getting any benefit from that. And she's like, well, Eric, why do you enjoy this? And I'm like, I, I love seeing projects up. I love to see like to go from concept to execution to beautification. And, and that's in, in businesses. That's what you see every day. You get the toil, the grind when people are like, oh, I got to be grinding it out. Yeah, it's you do need to grind it out, but you can't let the grind grind you. You need to stay well oiled you got to stay, you know, in motion and, and be able to, you know, roll with the punches. So, uh, so real quick, just a, so, uh, for our listeners in, in blue coolers, like what made you want to get into the cooler industry? I mean, you even talked about it. You, you called it a, a Yeti type product. I mean, you're fighting mm-hmm. 
Google world, uh, Google world now. I mean, Google some big word. There's big names in this in, uh, yeah, in the, in the cooler industry. Yeah, and that's the biggest one right there, right? So right. It, it is a little bit of a David and Goliath type of uh, battle. Um, I don't mind that. Um, I, I think uh, for me, what what so uh, my business partner and I, we we both do a lot outdoors, and it was one of those products where we looked at it and just said, "Hey, you know." my past experience, his past experience has been in, uh, kind of outdoor products and survival and, and that type of environment. And we said, Hey, we want to create a branded company. I knew I wanted to give, give, uh, take a shot at building a, a new company. Um, and I, I liked that space cause I understood it and I liked the product because it's something I can relate to. And I think that's helpful because it's, it's, if you remember back, Eric, Eric and I sold pest control door to door back in the day for, uh, for I just a got done. I just got done telling the story to one of my agents. They're like, you know, they thought I grew up in this like storied like life of they're like, oh, we, th- we thought you just grew up. I'm like, no, no, no. Those are all my friends that grew up in Bountiful up in a bit of big, beautiful <laughs> house. No, I grew up in the hood. I grew up in North Las Vegas. And I tell the story of how I gave up my cushy valet job to go sell pest control in Florida. And I did that because of my friend Marcus. And to, to your credit, you've never even real. I don't know that you realize this, Marcus, just to, if you want to put this under your belt and make you sleep better at night. But here's some stats for you. So the company that I own, Rooftop Realty, has been a top 100 brokerage now for almost three years. I have over 60 agents. We, you know, we are one of the most efficient. We almost have the highest number of transaction counts per agent. So that means if you're an agent at my office, you're probably going to do more deals than an agent at another office. And part of that, I started that journey because of you, right? I had a, you know, I had the cushy job in college. I had a valet. I had good money. And then Marcus is like, I don't even know. I, I kind of broke up with my girlfriend, actually. Marcus and I went to, you know, went to uh, persuade my, my then girlfriend to not go on a mission and, and uh, come home and let's, you know, take a different path. And Marcus is like, you just need to get away from Las Vegas. Let's go sell pest control. And I literally on the whim quit my job and packed up my stuff gave my stuff to my roommates, said, you guys can keep my whole house of furniture, keep my flipping big TV. I'm going to drive out to Florida. So I drove out to Florida in two days, slept in my car, slept in <laughs> someone's house that, along the way. And I got to Florida and everyone's like, well, did you do really well? And I go, ah, I'm pretty sure I broke even on that deal. <laughs> and, uh, but Looking back, it also, and then I came back, I had to scrounge for jobs. I gave up a cushy valet job to now I was scrounging to jobs to now I've been in real estate now for uh, 18 years. And I get a lot of satisfaction from helping my agents and helping my clients in a very professional manner. So in a small way, Marcus, I tip my cap to you for helping my real estate career. Uh, well, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's good to hear, Eric, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, my, my story is not all that dissimilar, right? I, and, and I sold pest control several years, but there are lessons to be learned through that grind. Right. And, right. and I would encourage anybody out there that has a, a son or daughter that is trying to figure out what they want to do with their life. Like let them go sell pest control for a summer or alarm systems or whatever it might be. They'll learn a lot about themselves through that experience and whether they're successful or not. And, you know, I, the reason we got on this kick was because we were talking about, and I always remember this from pest control is it's really hard to sell something that you don't believe in. Right. And so with pest control, I had to see, I, I, I mean, I was a 21 year old kid. I had never had any need for pest control. So early on, it was really hard for me to sell it. Because I was like, what I'm, I feel like I'm just selling like magic water spray. Like, I, is this doing anything? But uh, after some people took me out and showed me what was actually happening and how it was working, and you start seeing, okay, this actually adds value to somebody's life, 
then all of a sudden it's really easy to sell. And so kind of coming back to coolers, coolers was something that I had used and impacted my life. I had found these kind of this trading up that was happening from these old crappy coolers to these really cool and effective new coolers as really something that I valued personally. And so it was something that I could personally get behind and get excited about. Right. So that's what we did. Awesome. Marcus, thanks for being on today. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, for our listeners, where can they find out where's the best place for them to get a cooler? Go ahead and plug so, it. Yeah, easiest way to find us and learn about our product is just going to our website, bluecoolers.com. And there's a lot of those videos we talked about, a lot of the product information. Uh, we're running some pretty decent sales right now. We just came off some, so a pretty good weekend from Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So inventory is running a little tight, but there's still stuff available. So yeah, check us out. We'd love, we'd love to help uh, get people set up with a cool 10 day ice blue cooler. And, and when nice. in doubt, if you're looking for a little uh, humor, listen to staying in trouble yeah. and we're going to set up a separate little link for our blue cooler jingles because they, I have to give credit to Adam. He put a lot of effort and they are hilarious. And so, I mean, every I'll week, put one before this show. Yeah. Every so week, Marcus, show, he was I'll, coming up with I'll a new on one this. and he's like, man, are we going to get a, a tumbler out of this? <laughs> hey, Listen, man, you got you guys need to get some some creative stuff in the background there. Yeah, yeah, we. You do. guys start Something. throwing some stuff up there, and I'll get you some blue coolers products to throw in the background. We'll do that. We'll, we'll do that. We're going to put a shelf, and we want to put a, a banner with the with the the picture of the show on there, and some stuff like that. So, just like you, man, we're growing. We're trying to get yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'll get you one, man. All right. Just got to get some get some inventory in. So. All good, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Marcus. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks. It's been fun. See ya.